Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can write a C program to determine if the architecture we're running on is Big Indian or Little Indian. If you haven't run into that before, we're in a Big Indian architecture. The most significant byte is stored at the lowest memory address, meaning the biggest number is at the lowest address. Little Indian reverses that, where the least significant byte is stored at the lowest memory address, or the most significant byte you could think of is stored at the end of where that particular data is stored. So let's assume that we have some integer value. And to just so that we can see the tell the bytes apart, we have a1, b2, c2, d4 in hex. So in a big Indian architecture, we would store that a1 first, then b2, then c3, then d, and that should be a 4. Whereas with a little Indian, we store the least significant byte first, so that would be stored in memory address 100, C3 and 101, and so forth. So you'll notice it reverses the order of the bytes, not the bits. That's something you want to make sure you keep in mind. We're reversing the order of just the bytes. Different architectures, they choose a different way of doing this. Uh, and this creates a little bit of difficulty when you're communicating between two systems. With networks, when you're communicating over network, you'll assume that everything is big in the end, and then on the end, you would convert to little Indian if you needed to. So the question is, is, is the machine we're running on right now big Indian or little Indian? And we can actually write a C program that'll tell us that. And there's two ways we can do this. So maybe we'll do both ways here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an unsigned int. That's equal to one. Now, the thing to keep in mind here, only the low order, least significant bit is set, right? Because it's one. Okay, so now if I create a char pointer and I point that to the address of n, Notice that's going to be a character pointer to the first byte where this unsigned int is stored. So now, if I dereference C, notice every byte is going to be 0 except for the first one. That's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then how is that going to be stored in memory? Well, if it's little Indian, it would be stored in memory zero or actually let's go ahead and show here. So here so if it's little Indian, n will be stored in memory as zero one zero 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 zero. So if we dereference C, that would be one. So we can say if C, we'll put an F little Indian. Otherwise, it's big end, big Indian. So let me copy this and modify it. If it's big Indian, it'll be stored as one. So C will be zero because again, C is pointing to that first byte of N would print F big Indian. And that's actually sufficient. And we're going to get a warning here. And I don't want to compile this with C++. I'm actually surprised I didn't get a warning for that character pointer, but that's, that's okay because it'll work. And so looks like we have little Indian architecture. And that makes sense because this is running on an Intel architecture. And so Intel has little Indian architecture. Now there's an alternate way we can do this. And that is if we use a union. 
that has a char and it has an unsigned int in. And I can do something similar there where I can say, let's see, I'll create my union variable. Here I'm going to use a union to determine the Indianness of my architecture. And so I'm going to set un n to be 1. And, and if I wanted to, I could also make this a hexadecimal. That wouldn't really change things. And then. If un.c is equal to 1, and then we would print little Indian, otherwise print big Indian. Again, for the same reason as above, but notice now we're using a union. So we're setting this unsized integer to be 1, and then we're checking the, the character. So the character would, would be there. So... Um, Let's do a print statement here. So here we're going to use a char pointer. And here we're going to determine the Indianness with a union. And just to clean up the input a little bit, I'll indent our result just so that it, might, it looks a little better. And let me put a new line there. Okay, so I think that should be good. Let's compile this. Definitely want that to be an equality check. So now notice in both of these ways, we determined that we have a little Indian machine. And of course, we would hope that that would work the same. And they basically do the same thing. We're, you, we're setting a integer value, and then we're referencing the bytes of that with a char. And one thing you could do if you were, if you were curious, if you actually turn this into an array of four chars, or enough chars to cover however many bytes you have in your integer, you could actually print each of those out, and they should all be zero except for, for one of the bytes. That would be one. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to Indianness and then using some of the techniques we can do in C to determine the Indianness of our architecture.